server is open. In the last video, I explained about the baseband transmission of uh, the digital PAM signal by using this log diagram. This is a transmitting filter channel. We get uh, the output here, say H of shape, something like that, uh, as a frequency response of this entire uh, transmitting filter and the channel. Noise will be added in the ch channel, then R of T I'll get, uh, that signal is given to the receiving filter. Y of T is the output of that receiving filter, where there is an impact of the ISI also. Sampling, when I, I sample at, a, say, some KT intervals, at the KT uh, interval, I get a symbol. Along with that, there will be an impact of the ISI or the spreading or in the channel. Now, what we, in this topic, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to explain a signal design for a band limited channels, a bandwidth limited channel, how to transmit the signal in such channels, how to design a transmitting filter, what are the conditions. Now I said about ISI, inter-symbol interference, in the presence of ISI, how to detect my symbol. ISI will not completely eliminate my symbol or it produces error, but if I sample at a particular instant of time, still depending on amount of ISI. Still, I will be able to detect my signals or my symbols, zeros and ones, at a particular instant of time, at a sampling intervals. Now, here, uh, these are all familiar equations which I explained in my previous video. I will just go through those uh, equations. If uh, you want detailed uh, uh, explanation for this, please watch my previous video. V of t is the output of the transmitting filter. This is the transmitting filter, V of t. Series of pulses, MRA uh, symbols what we are transmitting number of bits are grouped together and m number of symbols amplitude levels are assigned to this r of t is the input for the uh, receiving filter after passing through a channel with some noise some spreading isi and all happens okay now what we are going to uh, do in this case is we have to solve the problem of designing a band limited transmitting filter that is this particular filter that is gt of f the response of that particular filter and we assume that there is no distortion in the channel for a distortion less kind of channel. That is, what is H of F? H of F is nothing but it is the output of this. H of F is at the output of the channel. It is nothing but it is the, in the frequency domain, or maybe the time domain is convolution, frequency domain is uh, multiplication, you can say, or maybe multiplication in the uh, convolution in the frequency domain is a time, uh, convolution in the time domain. So H of F is equal to C of F convolution with GT of F. That's what uh, we have written over here. Now, the condition for uh, distortion less transmission is distortion happens in the channel because of the noise and all. The condition for that uh, distortion less channel is this component that is C of F, the magnitude of that C of F should be equal to 1. The magnitude should be equal to 1, that is constant magnitude, you can see. It should have a constant magnitude and linear phase over the bandwidth of the transmitted signal. The bandwidth of the transmitted signal is W because I am transmitting a low pass signal here without any modulation. So bandwidth will be W hertz, that is the highest frequency in the low pass signal. So within that particular bandwidth, the magnitude of that C of F should be equal to 1 or uh, C of F should be equal to this. This condition should satisfy. That is C of F is equal to C naught exponential minus J 2 pi F T naught. What is T naught? T naught is the time delay factor which usually we assume for a convenient purpose, we assume that this is equal to uh, 0, T naught, that means there is no delay, whatever the signal is transmitted through a channel, it receives, uh, received by the receiver without much delay. So let us say that T naught equal to 0, if that T naught is equal to 0, this exponential term will be equal to 1. That means C of F equal to C naught within the bandwidth of the uh, transmitted signal. And for convenient purpose again, this is a constant, C0 is a constant, let us assume that that C0 is equal to 1, normalized, let us consider. So that means C of F is equal to 1. If C of F is equal to 1, I can say that simply that H of F, that is at the output of the channel, H of F is simply equal to GT of F. That means the response of the transmitting filter is actually matched to the response of the overall response of this particular system, this entire system. In that case, there will be no distortion. So you can say that that is H of F is equal to GT of F over the bandwidth of the transmitted signal. So in a way, you can say that the GR of F, that is the response of this receiving filter, is nothing but it is equal to GT of F, but it is convolution of GT of F. Now, when it is sampled at the receiver, again, 
passed through this yft is passed through the uh, sampler it is sample sample uh, at say m t equal to mt i can say that y of mt is equal to x0 am it is not x of 0 it is x suffix 0 of m plus the isi effect this is isi plus this actually represents the uh, additive white gaussian noise the effect of the noise on the transmitted symbol or more simply we can represent something like this these are all these things i have explained in my last video please go through that om equal to x not am plus summation this represents again uh, isi now what is isi inter symbol interference that we will understand now in the presence of isi how to detect the signal that we will understand i have taken this particular example here to explain the concept of isi let us say the first one is the transmitted waveform it's a binary case i have taken not uh, mri zeros and ones represented by using a unipolar representation this is the bit interval when this such kind of signals are transmitted over a channel because of the limited bandwidth when there is a limited bandwidth here the signal will be dispersed the transmitted signal will disperse something like this so this is the distorted kind of waveform what i'll get when i receive the signal in the front end of the receiver okay so the spreading happens because of the channel bandwidth limited bandwidth now when this dispersion happens what is happening here this is 1 0 1 0 that's what i'm transmitting so this one is spreaded to multiple symbols or this one is spreaded over the symbol there is a overlapping of the symbols right this is basically zero actually but because of this overlapping it may be uh, sampled in the receiver as one there is a possibility of error that depends on amount of interference my symbol is interfered with only two symbols this symbol is interfered with zero as well as one it may interfere with multiple previous symbols maybe or next symbols there will be a huge impact of that uh, spreading of pulses or in a way you can say the inter symbol interference so now just look at this what we have to do in the receiver how to detect the symbol in the presence of isi so what we can do is this symbols received signals are actually uh, displayed in the cr cathode ray oscilloscopes so this signal is an input signal so given to the y channel for x channel let us say we are giving some sort of waveform where the beam will move something like this comes back in the x channel y channel the amplitude variation so these individual pulses are over the you know, within the bit interval are placed one over the other one over the other so the waveform what we get for a binary transmission is something like this just look at this there are multiple symbols within the bit interval so this particular representation uh, almost looks like your eye human eye so that's why these are actually called eye pattern the received signal displayed over the cro is actually called as eye pattern so because it looks like a human eye so this is for a binary case there's only one eye here within this particular interval again one more eye you can see this is for a quaternary case that is for m equal to 4 quaternary means 4 m equal to 4 there are three eye such patterns binary one for quaternary it is three uh, eye patterns what we have right <coughs> excuse me now <clears throat> this is a general representation of the eye, eye diagram this is actual you can say this is general representation this is eye pattern see in the eye pattern again by looking at the eye pattern by when i look at maybe for a binary case or a quaternary case by looking at that eye pattern i should decide at what time i should sample the signal it is sample the signal the receiver sampling we do here right so that is the sampling time we need to choose whether we have to sample at this instant of time at the middle or at this instant of time or this time or this time which time is better to sample the signal with this signal at this instant of time so that kind of you know information we will get by using a eye pattern now just look at general diagram here i'll explain with respect to this this width actually represents this is the eye diagram again this width actually represents the noise margin noise margin means it is the uh, opposition to the noise the amount of opposition so here the noise margin is high during this time interval the noise margin actually decreases okay so that means these are not the best time these are not best time to sample the received signal so the sam uh, the best time is to to sample the signal is when the eye opens large so here the eye open is wider so if i sample at this instant of time at the middle you can say at the center at the center yeah somewhere here if i sample at those instead of time 
I can get back my original signal. So this this actually represents the sensitivity to the timing error. Means we get a error if I sample at this particular instead of time. This is a zero crossing. Zero crossing means something like this. See, this is zero crossing, right? This is going like this. I am expecting something like this, but it's going something like that. So this is zero crossing. This is zero crossing. So you can say this is the distortion what we get at the zero crossing. There's a overlapping over here, right? So that is not the best time. So the optimum sampling time is this time. So by looking at eye pattern, I can decide. See here, the it is wider at the middle. The eye opening is large. So you have to sample the signal at that instead of time. Okay, where the noise margin is high. So this kind of information we will get by using the eye pattern. So eye pattern is the best method to decide the sampling interval in the receiver. So this is just a representation of uh, the eye pattern. So in this video, I have explained uh, the designing of the transmitting filter matching the response with the uh, channel response what is i pattern the intersymbol interference see these concepts i have explained in this video thank you for watching this